Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be beginning the narration and character voice acting for the side story Come Catastrophes or Wakes of Vultures. The Black Steel side story. It is finally here, so let's see what the three girls that we've known for quite a while in this game are up to. Especially Jessica in all her decked out gear and equipment that she carries with her. But yeah, before we begin, the usual thing here at the beginning. To anybody new to Arknights who might be wondering, or to anybody else who is wondering, do you need to know anything before heading into this side story? Like if there's anything majorly connected to this uh, side story from before or something else? The short answer would be no, you can just head into this thing and experience what is happening. However, the a bit longer answer here would also be that these three characters have been part of quite a lot of things. So it's kind of hard to... I recommend just one thing, but as you know, the three characters here in front and center have been part of the main story, and Liskarm and Franca have also been part of a sort of major, pretty decent good uh, side story, uh, aka the Rainbow Six Siege side story that has been in the game, or uh, dropped into the game a couple of years back, and miraculously will be actually available again uh, later this year when when the second part of the story drops uh, But that will be for a later date But as a side note if you're curious about the side story considering for newer players It is not available to just unlock yet until it drops later uh, You can find the full fully narrated just like this one uh, Side story on the channel. I will leave a link in the description of the video as well considering it's a story that features uh, Liskarm and Franka Sort of heavily, they're pretty pretty involved in that whole thing. Uh, so yeah, if you want to see more <laughs> about these two uh, lovebirds, quotes, <laughs> question mark, exclamation mark, heart. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see more about these two, uh, you can do so in that side story. Jessica, on the other hand, just like the other two, part of the main story, plus some other minor things. Uh, and of course, all three of them have operator records, so there is a lot and you can see why this is the <laughs> longer answer and the very hard to recommend because you can only experience it if you consume a ton of other stuff. One thing I will recommend and it is a thing I will be probably reading alongside uh, as I'm finishing up these episode, episodes rather, uh, is the manga. The manga for Black Steel that uh, has been also recently over the last couple of months released on the official uh, Arknight's uh, homepage, uh, the English one, uh, is now fully available, it is fully done as well. Uh, so I'll probably be reading it, I'm still looking for a time and date maybe to do a, a live stream, that is, uh, where we read that one together, but I'll leave that for when I'm completely done recording this whole thing, I don't want to do it, do it in the middle, because uh, I'll be very busy. And the schedule is already established, so pardon. But yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, the manga I'll link in the description of the video as well, uh, so if you want to go ahead and read it, it is basically a story about uh, Franca, Liskarm, Jessica and uh, Vanilla uh, before they joined uh, Rhode Island and their escapade, so enjoy. I'll be probably reading it alongside you as I'm doing these episodes. But anyway, that is pretty much all I want to say here at the beginning. Plus a couple of things, but let's first head in and let me show you how much we're going to be covering in part one today. So, part one is pretty much what you see right now. Uh, the introductionary cutscene and the first two battle stages and the cutscenes surrounding them. Now, before we head into our introductionary cutscene, uh, first off, today's episode, considering we have a side story here with an altar, will be handled pretty much, or rather this series will be handled pretty much like the more recent series here on the channel where we had altars like Ea Fiala and Executor, which means that today's episode will be ending with the full file and voice file for original Jessica, and in the final part of this narration we'll be doing the same thing for Jessica's altar. Jessica's altar also has an operator record, uh, which was added with this patch together with her, uh, which I will be reading once I'm done recording everything, so once the final part is fully recorded, and if by any chance that one is like an extra epilogue to round out things for her, for example, or maybe for everybody, uh, we will be including the operator record in the final part, uh, together with her file and voice file, that is, 
And also as a sort of bonus thing, but don't uh, hold me to that one yet. Uh, the there there is a operator record that was added with this patch that piqued my curiosity as to why it would be here. But considering that we have two Sancta old men here in the back, and you will you will see them very soon in the story as well. Uh, not to spoil anything, but uh, you will see them in the story. And uh, I do wonder, considering they added with this uh, patch, uh, with this patch also a operator record for Executor Alter. I'll wait again until I'm done with the final episode and recording and see what that one is about, because that one piqued my interest immensely. I wonder if it has anything to do with any of the two men that I just mentioned. But again, that will be for a later date. If it fills in any blanks, I will be including that then in the final part as well. But like I said, don't quote me on it. If it doesn't connect to any of these two or to the story in general, uh, then it won't be there. <laughs> uh, in, in short. But yeah, anyway, let's begin with the story, finish off the story, and then finish off uh, the whole thing with Jessica's file and voice file. So let's begin with our introductionary cutscene, titled In the Line of Fire. Everyone feels down on their luck, no matter where they come from. They say there's gonna be another attack in about half an hour. You want some water? Never mind. Look how tense you are. You just throw it up anyway. Breathe. Breathe. Relax. Where are you from, girl? Columbia, huh? Ever heard of Davistown? No? That's a shame. It's a pretty neat place. Its route takes it around the eastern forests, and the winters are long and cold. But it's played as home to a mine. Keeps its core's energy tower burning the whole time. Just the heat generated from that keeps everyone warm all winter. It can get pretty hot indoors, but it's also cold outside. So no matter where you go, as soon as you open the door, you get puffs of white steam gushing out toward you. Which condenses on your eyelashes like teardrops. You have to wipe them off quick. Or the kids inside will laugh at you. But that's okay. That's when you fight back. Lift them by the armpits and toss them into the thick snow drifts outside. Now you get to laugh at all the snow on their faces. Oh? Piqued your interest? Yeah, it's a great place. Everyone wants to go and see it for themselves. And I, uh... I really want to go back and have a look, too. <sighs> How is it so damn cold here? I don't get it. How the hell does this even happen? So goddamn cold! Get your ass inside, then. If you know it's cold, why are you complaining about it with the door open? I don't want to get the floor dirty. You say that like you can wipe your feet on the snow. Here, hot tea. Ooh, that's hot! That floor's pretty dirty in the diner today, huh? If I'd known, I would've just walked in. We got some heavy snow. Every time someone steps inside, it just gets dirty again. I'll clean it up after closing. So what are you having? Beans? Bread? What kind of choice is that? It's all we have. If you'd rather have nothing, suit yourself. Uh, can I, uh, get a little of both? Fine. Seeing how you're my first customer without a few screws loose, I'll even throw in a scoop of butter on the house. Helena... Now what? Why do you have mud on your chairs? 
Hey, you two. This ain't your home. Put your feet down. You talking to us, old man? <sighs> Settle down, you two. You stay out of this. Don't be like that. Everyone's here for a hot meal. No need to get physical. Hey, why are you taking his side? Because I'd rather not see every little quarrel in this joint end up in a knife fight. Shut up or I'll knife you too. For the love of... Stay out of this, Helena. I'll teach those hoodlums a lesson. Heh, your funeral. The ruffian takes his knife and steps forward, only for a dinner knife to fly at him from the opposite side and embed itself in the ground near his feet. You? Not another inch, boy. It's late. Go home to your mommy. Right back at you, woman! Before he can take another step, a second knife brushes past his cheek and lodges itself in the wall behind him. A few drops of fresh blood drip to the ground. But my ear! Stop whining. It's still attached. But I can't promise. It'll stay in that way unless you scram. Now. The restaurant's proprietor turns around and takes a cloth of the rack to start wiping the bar. There is another knife wedged between her fingers. Shit. Forget it, let's go. We can get them back for this later. Here, near meal. Thanks. Ow! Ah, it's hot! You're about the only person who can burn his tongue twice in one visit. Hey, I was starving. I haven't had a good meal all day. Anyhow, don't you think we've been getting more and more of these... thugs in town? Probably because Woodrow's out searching for Miles, so they think nobody's gonna stop them. <laughs> Miles sure knows how to be a pain in the neck. He left the plate without a word to look for fuel, only to disappear without a trace, and now Woodrow's gonna look for him. What choice did he have? We don't have enough fuel to go around beside, it doesn't matter what he ran into, he can deal with anything, man or beast, in three seconds flat. But what if Woodrow's too late to... Alright, enough yapping. Finish your bean stew. Uh, I'm just worried. Here, it's my last bit of butter. Now shut your trap, will you? Kids, you awake? There may be ambushers in the forest, the recon team has gone ahead to scout the area, and if they need any fire support, we can't just be napping in the transport. So, get up your butts, pick up your gear, and cover yourselves. On the count of three. Ah, uh, my eyes. What's wrong? It's the glare from the snow. I'm pretty sure I gave you a reminder of what to look out for when fighting in a snowfield. Where are your sunglasses? Yes, I didn't think it through. Whatever. I have to make do with what I have on hand. How are things looking up ahead? Patience. The situation's a little tricky right now. The snow's too thick, so it's hard to spot enemies in hiding. It'll take some time to pinpoint their location. <sighs> this was supposed to be a power plant repair job. And now we've got a clear out bandits too. Guess I just think of it as uh, charity work. What do you say, kids? The black steel operators all respond with Ready to go. Seems my lackeys can't wait anymore, Captain. Can we get in touch with the Davistown officers? They said they'll send someone to meet us at the entrance to the plate, but there is not much we can do in the way of combat support outside. Wow, such hospitality. Good to know, I won't be getting lost in town at any rate. It's a nearly bankrupt mining platform, we can't ask too much of them. They reported a power plant explosion and subsequent fuel leakage to the state government at the start of the year, but nobody cared. All things considered, they've dealt with it pretty well, so the pollution hasn't spread much, 
but the plant itself is almost beyond repair. Certainly more than the locals can handle. Hold up! The start of the year? How come they're only contacting us now? You think a tiny municipality has the budget for that? They never spend a dime until they're out of options. At the time, the plan could still barely support the platform's movements. A few months ago, it stopped working entirely. Now, Adopted can provide its most basic function, heating. It's minus 14 degrees here! And colder at night. So, is it all bad news or...? Based on the map, Davistown is just up ahead. You should see it as soon as you get out of the woods. Anything more exciting? Ah, perfect timing. We've located our targets. You can start clearing them out. Lovely! One last thing before I hop to it. Where are Jessica and Laura? You send them somewhere? The enemy camp. There was a local being held captive there, without too many guards. It wasn't a good idea to send too big of a force. Okay, gotcha. I'll clean this up ASAP. Hey, we've been hanging in here for an hour, old man. You thirsty? Need a sip of water? <sighs> if you ain't saying nothing, that means yes, right? He picks up a handful of snow from the ground. Here, have as much as you want. No need to thank me. <coughs> Please, let me go. I have nothing on me. <coughs> what are you saying? It's so boring out here in the snow and we finally run into you. Been a while since I had some fun. Enough messing around. I'd like some peace and quiet, so hurry up and deal with them. You hear that, old man? You're so loud, you're bothering my buddy here. We gotta shut you up. <laughs> Freak. Everyone else is out ambushing the caravan and we're stuck here guarding the camp. And when they get back, they'll be loaded with loot and we'll have to settle for the scraps. You telling me you're okay with that? If you aren't going to, I'll take care of him myself. What are you going to do? Quiet. It'll be over soon. Uh, no! Uh, who, who's there? Who, who are you? Shh. Quiet. I'm gonna untie you. Keep your voice down and follow me. Can you do that? This is Laura. I've secured a hostage. How are things in your end? All done, but uh... Are you hurt? No, but my comms... Broke. It's fine. I can deal with it. Thanks. No need to thank me. Okay. I'll take the hostage to the rendezvous point. See you later! Later! I'm taking you with me! Coming at me head on. You're one brave fella. <laughs> that was the last one. Reporting in, Captain. All targets neutralized. Okay. We're getting ready to leave too. We should be rendezvousing with you in a few minutes. Wait there for Jessica and Laura. Hey! Hello! What's going on over there? There's no need for comms at this distance. You just had to come early, huh? Someone once told me that playing pranks after combat can help alleviate stress. Wow, you're getting better at this. I learn from the best. The weather here is really temperamental, huh? It was all clear just earlier, but it's already starting to fog up. 
We've checked all your injuries, Mr. Miles. The bruise on your abdomen doesn't seem serious, but I suggest you visit the hospital as soon as you can. Hospital? Davistown ain't had a hospital in a long, long time. Uh, good. We're heading to Davistown too. We can take you back. What are you folks up to there? Relax, sir. We were dispatched to help the plate restart its operations. We brought some fuel and supplies. They should be enough for the residents to last until the power plant is repaired. But uh, you all bring any technicians? The plant was already on its last legs. Without any technicians, the blasted battery will kill us the moment it goes out for good. Calm down, sir. I'm the lead technician on the team. Call me Laura. Nice to meet ya. I'm Miles, a uh, Davistown boiler worker. Thank you. Thank you. So, why'd you leave the plate? It's dangerous out here. We're almost completely out of fuel, so I came out to try my luck. But if you all are here to fix the plate, can we get going now? One second, let me ask Jessica where she is. Hey, Jessica, it's Laura. You done there? I'm all finished. Then hurry up and get over here. Hey, uh, Jessica? Jessica? Laura, where are you? I'll head over right now. Um, Laura? Hello? Hello? Why did the communicator have to break down now of all times? Let me check the coordinates. Uh, where's the camp? How come there isn't so much as a marker? Where am I? I'm not lost, am I? Calm down, calm down. You're near Davistown. You aren't far from the plate. I, uh... I guess I'll have to wait for the wind to stop. <sighs> so cold. Jessica breathes a sigh and puts her hand in her pocket. Her fingers feel the velvet pouch in her bag, as well as the small, hard object inside. She takes out the pouch and pours out its contents. Flashback. Reporting. You, huh? Captain Liskarm encountered a windstorm on her way back and hasn't been able to return to the landship. I'm standing in for her to the for the briefing. Have you received the Davis Town mission notice? Yes, sir. What about the details? Have you read it over yet? We will be heading to Davis Town, a mining platform with a small residential area. The platform is currently stranded in the forests of eastern Colombia due to a power plant explosion. Our mission is to repair the plant and restore the plate's mobility. Good. If I remember correctly, the supplies were issued today. What about the follow-up arrangements? That's all it said in our orders. Never mind. There's no harm in telling you. As soon as David Stone returns to its original route, Fort Baron will be there to tow it to a nearby nomadic city for merging and salvage. Why are you telling me this? Jessica, ever since you got back from Victoria, you haven't been putting in as much effort as before. Sir, I'm not sure that's a fair appraisal. I've been giving it my all in every mission and have fulfilled every mission objective. Just last month, you refused an order to evacuate an area polluted with originium dust. There was someone nearby who needed rescuing. Half a year ago, during an assault operation, you violated your superior's orders and specifically chose a route away from the residential areas. Your entire team almost got caught up in an unnecessary battle. The original plan would have caused significant damage to the local residences. I, uh, I... 
A year ago, when you had just returned from Victoria, you immediately charged into the command center. If you'd been carrying a firearm, I would have thought you were mutinying. Sorry, sir, I wasn't able to control my emotions, but hundreds of Victorian citizens were... I understand your anger, but have you ever considered what would have happened if we hadn't evacuated as soon as possible? If a duke were to find out that Blacksteel, a Colombian company, was in the area? To the countries involved, this would have sparked a conflict, but to normal folks, we'd call that a disaster. That does make sense when you put it like that, but... What does this have to do with our upcoming mission? I'm just trying to remind you to avoid making the same mistake you made in Victoria. The same mistake? Um, what do you mean exactly? <laughs> and while you are at it, take this pouch. Give us inside to a ma man from Davistown named Woodrow Bianchi. Could you describe him at all? Uh, like his features or race? No need. You'll know who he is the moment you see him. Sir, I still don't understand. It's just a power plant repair. Why? Let me remind you, Jessica. You're a mercenary. This is about business, not duty. Now go. Back to present. Jessica picks up the bullet that fell from the pouch and holds it under the sunlight to examine it. Rimmed cartridge, point forty-four. There's a pattern etched into the bottom. No, it's too faint. I can't make it out. Sancta ammo. Looks pretty much like the etched ammo we use at Blacksteel. The casing is rusted and the surface's copper has browned. Even under the direct sunlight, there is hardly any luster. Jessica breathes a sigh and puts it back inside the pouch. Make the same mistake I made in Victoria. What's going on in Davistown? Suddenly, she hears a sound that isn't the wind. Don't move, girl. Not unless you want a bullet through the chest. And we are moving on to our first battle stage. Titled In a Lonely Place. And it says, Preserving one's dignity is rarely an easy feat. Let's begin with the before part. In a panic, Jessica reaches for the handgun at her waist, but fear keeps her fingers saddled atop the holster, unable to bend. She smells something vaguely rank upon the wind. <laughs> Don't do anything rash now. From the thicket, a hunter walks into Jessica's line of sight, smoking gun in hand and with a bike brimmed hat covering his eyes. She turns and looks behind her to see the body of a wild beast lying in the snow, blood still flowing from the wound in its head. You ought to keep your wits about you here. Uh, thank you for saving me. Just passing by. The elderly man stows his gun and walks straight towards the beast's body. He draws a knife and slices open its stomach, clean and precise, to keep the blood from spilling out. He then sticks both hands into its belly and lets out a long sigh. It's so damn cold around here. Uh, excuse me, sir, but are you a local hunter? Suppose so. 
Do you know how to get to Davistown? The hell are you going there for? I'm meeting up with my teammates. You ain't alone? Well, my team split up to rescue a hostage from some bandits, but afterward, I broke my communicator and got lost in the woods. A hostage? Who? An elderly forty man. Uh, didn't expect it to be you people. Alright then, follow me. Where are we going? Didn't you say you were headed for Davistown? Um, but uh... Don't say I didn't offer. The old man pays her no more heed. He stands up to sling the carcass over his shoulders and briskly walks deeper into the forest. Uh, wait up! Hmm... You sure about leaving Jessica all alone out there? I know you're worried, and so am I, but after fighting by her side for so many years, I trust that she's perfectly capable of handling herself. I'm just worried there are more bandits out there. A couple of stragglers, sure, but what if they've got a whole band of reinforcements? Jessica's been through much worse than a bunch of thugs. <laughs> Whether it's a rain of arrows whizzing past her scalp, blades nicking her throat, or surroundings choked with active originium, where even a single crack in her protective gear would be immediately evident. Each and every time she completes the mission, without our support, and without the company's supervision. She may be on her own, but she never fails to deliver results. I can't deny that. But I'm sure you also know that she comes back every time with red, swollen eyes. So before she returns, someone has to be there for her when she, when she's bawling her eyes out, right? What do those puffy eyes mean? They mean that she's wiped the tears before coming to see us. She doesn't want anyone to see her crying. Yeah, she's only 23. Yes, 23. And two and a half of those last three years have been spent on the battlefield. Uh, excuse me, but did an explosion just go off nearby? Nope. I could swear I heard something. Pretty sure I wasn't imagining it. It wasn't a... It was a tree, not an explosion. A tree? If it gets too cold in the forest, the sap inside expands as it freezes, causing the trunk to burst. From a distance, it sounded a bit like a firefight. What are you, anyway? Soldier? Burk? I've been a mercenary for almost five years now. Family in depth or something? No, I just didn't want to always be sheltered by my family name. I didn't want to follow the path that they laid out for me. So you went and became a Burk? I... yes. Hmm. So, what are you looking for on the battlefield? Fame, fortune, or glory? None of the above. I want to eliminate crises, resolve conflicts, and protect those in dangerous situations. Huh. So there are mercs who do that kind of stuff. News to me. Sir, we're in the ordinary mercenary group. We're... Let me remind you, Jessica. You're a mercenary. This is about business, not duty. We... Alright, enough of that. Don't give me your whole spiel. Sorry to bother you two, but are you talking about that seasoned mercenary with five years of combat experience? Yeah. Why? Got anything to add, Laura? You do have worked with the Jessica a lot longer than me, so you've got a much better grasp of her abilities and limitations than I do, right? 
What? So you think she can handle it on her own? Of course! Captain Liskarm is right. She's been too far more dangerous places over the last three years. But I can't help but worry when I think about that crybaby side of her. We all know she is going to be perfectly fine. Am I wrong? She doesn't know that. Yeah, she's on she's the only one. But maybe she just needs a chance. Just one chance to see her own worth. And you're saying that this is her opportunity? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, uh, sir, uh, excuse me, sir. You're awfully noisy, young lady. I uh, didn't mean to bother you, but if you could please take a look over there. Jessica points to a trap next to a tree in the distance. There, a beast cup's forelimbs are tightly clamped between metal teeth. The cup whines and blood seeps out from the trap's steel bite. After the old hunter takes notice, he sets down the beast carcass, walks over to the tree, unties the trap and frees the cup. It's just a cup. Maybe we can let it go. If its mother is in the area, we could take a quick look around. Also, I heard that during the winter, hunters will often let mothers and cubs go so that a pack can reproduce. Its mother is right here. You mean the beast you just killed? I've seen this female with her cubs a few times before. No, the mother's been shot to death, and the cup stepped into some sloppily placed trap. So its pelt is all ruined. So, what should we do with it? Bring its neck. Put it out of its misery. Uh, uh, how could you say that? What else? It won't last long on a broken leg with no mother. You wanna leave it here to die a slow death? You won't hear me complaining. So, there's no way for it to survive? Nope. Could you please hand it to me then? You want to finish the job? Be my guest. Shh. It'll be alright, little fella. Everything will be alright. Jessica holds the cup in her arms and gently runs her fingers down its fur. She doesn't do anything else. She patiently waits for the cup's vines to gradually fade away until they disappear completely. I couldn't save it, but at least I can let it go in a warm embrace. Merg's doing hospice care, huh? That's another first for me. Do you mind if I leave it here? I think the mother is a good enough catch on its own. What? You want me to bury it for you two? Hold a funeral while we're at it? No. Every animal in the forest is hungry during the winter. If we leave it here, maybe one of them can have a good meal. I might be a bit of a softy, but that doesn't mean I'm completely oblivious. If you get it, then try to keep up, Miss Mercenary. I'm guessing you don't want to get lost in the woods again. The winds clear the fog. Sir, did you bring us here just to get a view of Davistown? When I was little, I loved running to the high places near the plate, just to get a good look at the town I lived in. What was it like back then? Livelier, more glamorous, more full of life. <laughs> As for now, well... There's no going back, no turning back the clock. <sighs> it's freaking cold. 
Can't believe they shipped us off to a place like this. Franca, what's on your mind? I was just thinking about Jessica again. What about her? Didn't you say you weren't worried? I was thinking about that opportunity we were talking about. Oh, you mean the chance for her to see her own worth? Who knows, maybe one day it'll come to her in a gust of wind. A freaking cold one, so cold it makes her uh, shiver all over. But it'll sweep away all the fog before her eyes and everything will become as clear as day. I just hope that what she sees then won't be anything like what we're looking at. Amidst the dispersing fog, huge tracks formed of fallen trees and broken branches can be seen winding down the hillside towards the center of the valley. At their end is an abandoned plate. Despite the distance, everyone can clearly see an energy tower rising from the middle of it, feebly wheezing out puffy white breaths. Like a dying patient, struggling for air. Alright, and before we head into the after part, we have a couple of new enemies to add, as always. And that are the... Radioactive Originium Slug. Yes, that is a slug. No matter how much it looks like a spider, apparently that is a slug. And it says, A wild infected creature that accidentally consumed too much industrial waste, consuming it to leak arts energy upon death. These low intelligence creatures are easily manipulated by enemy casters to launch swarming attacks on man-made facilities. Our next one is the Paramilitary Gangster. A gangster hired to sow chaos, often picking fights, their employer has provided them with an experimental thermal amplification device. And the third thing is the Blocker. An un 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 unmanned drone controlled by enemy forces, capable of interfering with Originium Arts. They mostly play a supportive role and lack direct offensive capabilities. And with that done, let us proceed into the after part. Ugh. Ain't it way too cold in here today? Almost out of charcoal. Have to save some for later. Just burn that mountain of bills piling up at my place. The thing's just gonna send more anyhow. <coughs> Did you catch a cold? Come on, let's swing around to my place and grab a stack of that waste paper. Why do you think I'm coughing? Not in front of her. Oh, if it ain't Sylvia. Good m morning, Mr. Theremin. I'll bring someone from the bank out here to our shabby little establishment. Something wrong? Sorry. Hmm. <coughs> Leon, I ain't seen Ben in a while. What's the kid been up to? Busy, busy with his studies. Got his nose in a book till dawn every night. Didn't the school close down a while ago? Our neighbor, Miss Selena, used to be a school teacher. She reckoned it'd be a real shame for Benny to miss out on all that book learning, so she's been letting him study at her place. Huh, good for him. Benny's always been a smart kid, and he was real shook when he learned he wouldn't be able to go to school no more. Yeah, he was so anxious that whole year. Um, Mr. Theramin, actually, I, I could teach Benny to... Oh, right, you graduated from the best business school in Colombia. And what's he supposed to learn from you? How to become a banker so he can bury people in bills too when he grows up? I... Leon, eat your damn breakfast before it freezes over. <laughs> I need to get to work, so I'll be leaving now. 
I'll leave the money on the table. You know she ain't responsible for any of the loans here in Davistown, right? What are you giving her lip for? Then let her have a heart to harm with the others. It'll be even harsher. I guarantee it. But still, we watched her grow up. That's exactly why. Pisses me off even more. <sighs> Sorry to keep you waiting, ma'am. I hope we're not too late. Oh, uh, hello. It's fine. You're not late at all. What would you like me to call you? You can call me, um... <clears throat> How long have you been standing here, ma'am? Since uh, this morning. The message only said you'd be arriving today, but not the specific time. But it's already afternoon. You've been standing here this whole time? Uh, yes. Three hours ago, we sent a notification to the plate, updating them on our ETA. Uh, I didn't get anything of the sort. That's weird. Who sent you? Um, the manager. Manager? That's not a title I'm used to hearing in government work. Actually, I, I'm not from the government. I work for a local bank. Since when is a bank in charge of this? Actually, um, actually, Davistown is... Uh... We're here, Captain Liskarm. Is this woman the one in charge of our reception? Wait, Zubia, they sent you out here for this? Uh, that's, that's right, sir. Hey, old man, any idea why the government sent a banker to pink us up instead? <sighs> You'd best ask the bank directly. I sure ain't gonna be able to explain all the twists and turns. Alright then, Franca, go ahead and take the gentleman home. And while you're at it, take a walk around Davistown to get a better grasp of the situation here. Understood. Lara, bring the others with you and find a good place for a safe house where we can securely store our supplies and vehicles. If you manage to get a hold of Jessica, report it to me right away. Got it! Sylvia and I will head to the bank to find out what exactly is going on here. That's our teacher's path for you. Thanks for vol volunteering for the hard part. <laughs> where should we regroup once we're all finished? You all can meet up at the only diner still open in town. It's right by the only road to the mine, run by a real nice lady named Helena. And if this Je Jessica of yours finds her way into town, I reckon that's where she'll end up too. Hmm. It's decided then. The bank is right up ahead, miss... Uh... People have been avoiding us the whole way here. Had I known, I'd have asked Franca to take my equipment back with her first. Uh, no, that's not why... <coughs> you asshole, you run into someone and don't even apologize. It's over. Sir, are you okay? It's all over. Sir? Sir? What happened? What's going on? It looks like his soul has left his body. Where's he going? Do you recognize him, Sylvia? No, I am... Um... Let's, um, head to the bank first. Inside of the bank, on an advertising board. Along with the rapid development of pioneer settlements, nomadic plates, both large and small, have also been springing up. But at the time, very few financial institutions in Colombia were specialized in pioneering. After looking deeply into the living conditions of the countless pioneers on the frontier's edge, our founder decided to plan his roots alongside them 
and established the first bank to provide practical financial support to the lower and middle classes. He prided himself in building trust, showing kindness, and doing his best to provide attentive service to everyone who walked through his doors in the rough and tumble frontier. It wasn't long before his hard work and empathy won him wide recognition. Then we began forming close and fruitful partnerships with local governments, working together with mining and pioneering companies to help them flourish and expand rapidly into settlements just like Davistown. Quite the legend, wouldn't you agree? And who might you be? Sorry for keeping you waiting, Miss Liscarm. I am this bank's manager. My sincerest apologies for not being able to welcome you in person earlier. We are aware of the problems facing Davistown. A few inconveniences are to be expected. However, no need to be reserved. Feel free to speak your mind. We were planning to liaison with the local government, not a bank. What exactly happened to the government here? Sylvia, did you not explain the situation? Uh, manager, I... Uh... Sylvia stood alone in a call for the better part of the day. If you ask me, what she needs right now is hot water and a blanket. Of course, Sylvia, take half a day off and go home and get some rest. Okay, I'll see you later then, miss. Oh, Sylvia... Miss Liscarm, if there's anything else you need, please let me know. Resources are scarce on this plate, but we will do everything in our power to accommodate you. I appreciate the sentiment, but please don't try to change the subject. Why is it that Black Steel's clan was the local government, but we're de being greeted by your bank's employees? Where are the heads of the local government agencies? Hmm. Please, come with me. Are you telling me that your government officials are in the bank's garage? During last year's bankruptcy liquidation, the local government cut most of their departments and laid off most of their employees, but it wasn't enough to pay off the massive debts they still held. In the end, the remaining government buildings were put up for auction as well. What about the mayor then? Where is he? Unfortunately, after the last mayor ran off with hardly a penny to his name, the townsfolk never found a suitable uh, candidate to replace him. As you can see, all that remains today is the mayor's secretary and a few temporary employees. <laughs> it's okay. If the bank hadn't generously provided us with free office space, we'd be out on the streets. It's just the right thing to do. Besides, it's nothing compared to what you've been through. Seeing as the government is still functioning, can we... Uh, no. Uh, I mean, as much as we'd like to help you, we simply don't have the manpower to support your work. Then, who is in charge of matters concerning our job here? We've given full authority over to the woman standing next to you. Go to her for anything you might need. Absolutely. My door is always open. I certainly hope you can issue a formal document showing this authorization. Mr. Secretary, when can we when can she expect that document? I'll have it ready right away. The official seal somehow went missing yesterday, so I've sent someone to go look for it. Thank you. Now then, I'm very much looking forward to a mutually beneficial partnership. <laughs> I'll show you to my office. Try not to dawdle, as we have many things to discuss before our work begins in earnest. Sure. Uh, wait, just a moment, ma'am. What is it now? Uh, well, it's been way too cold in here recently. Would you mind turning up the heat in the garage a smidge? Everyone's freezing down here. Of course. I'll always do my best to accommodate your needs. Have you and your teammates decided on our rendezvous point? Um, not yet, but 
It'll be fine. I'll find somewhere to wait for them on my own. There's a diner in Davistown. Wait in there. Um, where is it? Oh, um, you don't need to take me there. General directions should be fine. Forget it. Just come with me. Is he one of the plate's residents? Uh, that man, why doesn't he have anything with him? Uh, excuse me, sir, where are you going? Hello, are you leaving the plate? It's not safe out here. Over here, I'm talking to you. Look, over here, can you hear me? Sir? Sir? The man doesn't respond to Jessica's calls, and simply continues shuffling towards the snow in silence. In front of him, the vast white stretches far into the distance, blending into the dark, ashen sky. From Jessica's perspective, the vast snowfield gradually squeezes the man into a pale blue line. After a short while, he shrinks into a small dot, then finally disappears into the white. Nothing remains to prove he was even there, save for the tracks he left behind. Are you coming or not? Uh, I'll be right there. I'm back, Helena. Woody? About time. Oh, wait, where's Miles? He was rescued by this girl's friends. Um, and who are you? I'm a... She's a merc I met on the way. Her communicator broke, and she got separated from her teammates. I brought her into town to wait for them. Mind if I take a look at the communicator? Might be able to fix it up for you. Uh, here, sorry to bother you like this. No problem. You guys saved Miles, so what's a little communicator between friends? That said, why come here of all places? Uh, we received a commission from the local government to help Davistown restore its power facilities and get the plate back into its navigation route. Hold on, girl. Could you repeat that? Restore our power facilities? You ain't pulling my leg, are you? You should see the goofy grin on your face. Young lady, regardless of why you and your com companions are here, thank you so much for rescuing Miles. I've been so worried I ain't slept a wink in days. Alright, all's well that ends well. Then, got anything to eat? Didn't have uh, nothing ready, but looks like you brought something back for me. Oh, right. A mother beast? Uh, sorry, it was my fault. Though he was fretting over something like that, this time of year. Nothing beats meat. Fair enough. Okay, you two, sit your butts down and grab something to drink. I'll prepare the meat. Hey, where are you getting why are you getting up to leave? Where are you gonna eat? Change of plans. Sir, uh, how badly damaged is the communicator? Nothing serious. Come on, let's go take a look around my warehouse. Might be some spare parts we can use. Stop tinkering for a second and give this a try. Deep right? Now this is the good stuff. But <clears throat> this definitely ain't enough for everyone. If you're worried about that, then stop scarfing it all down. The poor girl still ain't had a piece. <laughs> it's totally fine. He helped me fix my communicator, so 
He deserves to eat his fill. That barely counts for anything. It's so cold around these parts, we all gotta help each other out. Just to get by. Give us a holler if you ever need anything. Thank you. I appreciate it, ma'am. By the way, I happened to see someone a ways out from the plate. He wasn't carrying anything and wouldn't respond when I called out to him. He just kept walking deeper and deeper into the snow until I couldn't see him anymore. Did uh, something happen to him? Helena and Leon do not respond back. You're a guest here, young lady. Don't worry your pretty little head over stuff like that, and just fill your tummy first, okay? Then, would you mind if I ask you two about someone else? <sighs> Kids these days, they really stepped on the plate and already so many questions. Alright, fine, ask away. I wanted to know about a man named Woodrow Bianchi. Helena and Leon at the same time. Who? Sorry, I guess you're not familiar with him. I'll try asking someone else. Uh, no, that ain't a problem. You sure you're not confused? Woodrow's the man who brought you here, though. Alright, and we shall continue onward. First and foremost, the next thing in line would be the training stage. It does not carry any cutscene, but we shall add, as always, the uh, title and description, which says City Heat. There are many ways to test new inventions in Colombia, such as using someone who won't be missed. Thank you, Colombia. As always, appreciate it. Your contribution to science is amazing. Anyway, continuing on to the second stage, titled Double Indemnity. Now, before I continue reading, uh, the word indemnity was cu made making me curious, rather. Uh, because, again, I'm not English, so I was curious what the hell does that even mean? Uh, two meanings. Number one uh, would be security against or exemption from legal liability for one's actions. And the second meaning would be a sum of money paid as compensation, especially one paid by a country defeated in war as a condition of peace. So, hopefully now you've learned also something new like I did. Anyway, the description of the stage says, Repairing something old means willfully choosing to bear the burden of time. Proceed with caution. So, let us proceed into the before part. Jessica, where are you going? I need to go and find him. Jessica? Uh, Franca? Laura? What are you doing here? Reporting in. I've confirmed Jessica's location. She was in fact at said diner, and her lips are currently covered in oil. Best guess is that she's been getting acquainted with the menu. Understood. I'm just about finished on my end as well. Took you long enough, teacher's pet. We were starving out here. It was hard to find this place. It's in the middle of nowhere. Well, whatever. Let's just find something to tide us over. Miss, I'm extremely grateful you brought Miles home, but if you're gonna complain about my cooking, that's a different matter. Complain? What's there to complain about in this weather? Isn't that right, Laura? Of course, it's absolutely delicious. Better than anything my mom or grandma ever made, that's for sure. Good to hear there are still folks out there who appreciate the craft. So, what do they do for a living, sweetie? Are they cooks? Um, my mom's a doctor and my grandma's an engineer. Neither of them know their way around the kitchen, so my dad did all the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't you think you're enjoying that a little too much? <coughs> oh, easy there. I'm eating, see? I'm eating. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have anything to drink? I'd like a glass of water. Sure thing. Just a moment. 
Picking up a random empty glass on the table, the restaurant owner throws open the window and scoops up a cupful of thick snow. Give it a little bit to melt, and then it'll be drinkable. By the way, Captain, did you ever find out why we met up with someone from the bank? The government here is barely functional and doesn't have the capacity to interface with us, so they left the matter entirely to the bank. They left it to who? Well, what did the folks at the bank say? It roughly boils down to two things. We'll have their full support and the details will be discussed at a later date. Sounds like we've got our work cut out for us, but you're not the type to come here to eat your sorrows away, right? They're lacking in supplies and manpower, but they do have money. Money is the one thing we're not short on, though. That said, assuming the bank keeps their word, what do you think about hiring on a few of the locals? Ever since the power plant incident, most of the people on this plate have chosen to leave. It's hard to say how many able-bodied workers are left. That explains how few lights are on outside. It's barely 8 o'clock. To be honest, we don't need that many people either. I can handle the repair work with just my team. What we really need is someone with a deep understanding of the situation in the energy tower. Is the bank offering any good candidates? Nope. <clears throat> oh, about that. <clears throat> Sir? I was so busy fixing up your communicator that I forgot to introduce myself. The name's Leon Thurman, a blast engineer from the local mine. Pleased to meet you. A blast engineer from the mine? Why are you still here, after all this time? <laughs> a few of us stubborn old farts refuse to leave. I've been in this mine since I was four, wouldn't know how to live anywhere else. When the plan first started having problems back then, I took a team down there to deal with it. Though we never managed to fix it entirely, we did get it up and running for a while. I'm impressed. It's still working to this day. Eh, that's all in the past now. Nothing worth mentioning. But, uh, how would I be paid for this exactly? Oh, that. Uh, the commission's supposed to be completed ASAP, so we're not paid for a per diem. Only the required room and board expenses are covered. After the plant is repaired, we'll be paid in a lump sum. The faster we get it done, the bigger the reward. Of course, we can also offer you a portion of the payment in advance in the interest of cooperation. And uh, how much are we talking about here? You'll be treated as a consultant. If we can get the job done in two months, you'll get 40,000. In a month, twice as that. In a week, um... Uh, tw twice, twice as that again? A bit more than that, you'll be able to earn yourself a solid 200 grand. Deal! Didn't even think twice, huh? <laughs> I ain't turning down 200 grand! Sure, but where would you even spend that kind of cash here? Depends how old you are. For a young guy, 200 grand is enough to eat, drink and play to your heart's content. But when you're my age, it's just another drop in the bucket called debt. Uh, debt? Are you in debt? Not just me. Everyone left here is in debt. <sighs> How do I put this? Well, I'll just give it to you straight. You asked about the guy who walked out into the snowfield earlier, right? It's probably cause of his debt. That kind of stuff happens all the time here. After being forced into bankruptcy, he had no choice but to, uh, Walk straight into the snowfield with nothing on him. Uh, what are the odds he's still alive? I knew I should have stopped him. If we go looking for him right now, can we still save him? Uh, that ain't even worth thinking about. It's too late. <laughs> it's not your fault, Jessica. <clears throat> so, Laura, is there anything you'd like to discuss with Mr. Theremin? Oh, right. Come back here tomorrow to meet up with us, sir. If you have any materials, bring them with you, too. Alright, no problem. I know a few miners, too, and they can also, um... That won't be necessary. You're enough. Don't be like that. Got her to recruit a few more. Put yourself in our shoes. Shoes. All the able-bodied folks are gone, and the only people left are, uh... 
Old farts like me. Thanks for coming to see me, Benny. I'll be fine, though, so head on home. Stay out any later and Leon's gonna be worried sick about you again. I still haven't finished my writing exercises. Uh, besides, I don't want to go home. That is never a... Uh... Never mind. I know Leon's got a bit of a temper, but even after all these years, his feelings for you have never... I understand all that, but... <sighs> You're warm enough. Should I throw a few more logs onto the fire? Don't worry, it's fine. By the way, about those people who brought you home today, was that the same Blacksteel squad that rescued you? Yep, they're here to help us fix the energy tower. When it's all up and running, and the heat's working again, we won't even need this fireplace. But even if the tower can be fixed up, that doesn't mean the plate will come back to life. You're gonna go bald early if you keep worrying about crap like that. Someone has to worry about it, because that sure won't. And who else is going to? There was Carl, but he's gone now too. Many. Miles! Are you there, Miles? Thank goodness I found us a great job! We can fix up the power plant and make piles of cash while we're at it! Uh, Dad? What are you doing here? Oh, you're here, Benny! Well, you can stay and keep studying. I need to take Miles to go and meet those Blacksteel girls. I already met them. They're the ones who rescued me. <laughs> me and my memory. Did you already ask the others? I asked all over town. They're either already gone, getting ready to leave, or have given up altogether. You and I are the only ones still willing to put in the work on that plant. The safe house isn't expected to be completed, completely ready for us until tomorrow night, so we'll be establishing this as our temporary rendezvous point. Laura, as of tomorrow the engineer team will be under your command. We must restore this plant's mobility as soon as possible. No problema! As for Franca and Jessica, I have some odd jobs for the two of you. I need one person to come with me to pay the bank another visit, and the other needs to head to the outskirts of the plate to make a security assessment. Employees from the bank have said that bandits occasionally come from out there. C can I volunteer to head to the outskirts? Sure, why not? Which means I'll be going with... Oh, let's come here to see just how big of a headache these bank people are gonna be. Everyone, please note that while most of the tower is basically safe due to the active originium dust settling down over a long period of time, there are still areas where the index exceeds standard values. I've already synced your devices with these spe uh, specific danger zones. This will be a hot repair. As the tower is still in operation, I'll bite at low output, so please pay attention to your personal safety and report any accidents ASAP. Thanks, you two. You saved us a lot of time poking around at the danger zones one by one. I've worked here for most of my life. This place... plays more my home than that crappy room in the underpass. Then sorry in advance for making a bit of a mess. Wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, hmm, it's so badly damaged, but it's still burning? This is practically a miracle. Maz and I reinforced the furnace a few years back. Both to prevent accidents and to let it burn things other than originium fuel. Huh, the first time a winter like this struck, we still had some leftover originium products lying around, but later we were lucky to have wood to burn. As for now, all we can do is assess the situation. Team A is in place. Everyone else, report your location and status. We'll begin diagnostics in one minute. 
Team B is in place. Visual inspection shows approximately 30% damage to the combined cycling unit. Team C in place. The cooling system is completely wrecked, but since it's so cold outside, we can throw together a makeshift air cooling system. Team D in place. The ash discharging air duct is operating normally. We'll adjust our pace depending on the other team's needs. Well then, everyone? Let's get to work! Captain, I've arrived at the last patrol point. Any sign of bandits along the way? No, I drove all the way out here without seeing anything. Frank and I will be entering talks with the bank shortly. Be careful. If you encounter any problems, contact us immediately. Don't worry about inconveniencing us. Do you understand? Roger that! Helena said that Woodrow often passes by here after hunting. I don't know if I'll be able to meet him today. Why does it smell like pine oil here? Pine branches. Did someone start a fire? Someone's been through here, but who? Could it be Woodrow coming back to the plate? <sighs> Woodrow, wait for me! Someone else is back there. Oh no! Woodrow, watch out! <clears throat> Who? Who's there? Oh shit, you brought more bad news. What are you doing here? Sir, there might be bandits roaming in the area. You should head back to safety on the plate as soon as you can. Um, why do you look so angry? You sure know how to be a pain in the rear. But the man behind you just tried to snipe you. I came here to save you. You have any idea how hard it was to lure that guy out? And now all that evidence is down the drain thanks to your bullet. Uh, oh no, sorry I... Uh... Are you investigating something? Maybe I can uh, help you somehow to make up for it? Okay, now that you know there are bandits out here, ever thought about what they might be after? Uh, probably looting supplies since it's tough getting by around here. We can barely keep ourselves fed and clothed on the plate. You think they want our scraps? Their MO is to ambush and rob caravans. Then, uh, what are they after here? Lately, a bunch of people from the plate have gone missing, and my witnesses tell me some of them have been seen talking to bandits here before they vanished. So my question to you is this, what are you doing here? I... I was assigned to maintain security along the plate's outskirts and ensure that any bandits wandering the perimeter don't interfere with the power plant's repair. All on your lonesome? No, I have teammates. Besides, aren't you also here? Whatever. Bye. Uh, wait! The bullet! Oh, he's gone. Already gone. Alright, before we continue, we have just one enemy to add here to our uh, list for this, for this uh, event which is the Paramilitary Defender. And it says, a mercenary hired to sow chaos, equipped with a heavy protective suit that is charged in advance to preempt any emergency leakage issues. Due to their relatively high education level, part of the job description is to provide handwritten thermal energy amplifier reports to their employer. So, big, beefy and smart. Got it. Anyway, let us proceed into 
the after part. I must be seeing things. What's wrong? According to the results of the investigation, almost no part of the tower is intact. Everything is either damaged or ruined, and a lot of parts are flat out missing. It should have collapsed ages ago. Same over here. Almost all the spare parts are gone. Even the conveyor belt has been dismantled. <sighs> a caravan stops by Davistown about once every two months. We have to trade for our necessities, usually with the funk industrial equipment. <laughs> you call that a trade? More like robbing us blind. See that forklift? Hardly ever used and practically new. Well, at least 80% new. Do you know how much the traders offered for it? Ten boxes of canned food! Well, we gotta eat. By the looks of it, the plant was already in extreme disrepair even before the accident. We used to have a whole lot of workers on the job, but now Miles is the only one left. It'd be great if he could keep things running on his own, but we'd need about ten more of them. Tell me about it. Wish I could split myself into a hundred copies and put them to use right about now. This job's not as simple as the checklist makes it seem. If we don't play our cards right, we could be stuck here for a whole year. Come on, don't say that. I was counting on a 200 grand after after a week. 200 grand is nothing. Land yourself a security job with a venture capitalist in three months. I guarantee you'll earn a whole lot more than that. <laughs> when my employer was satisfied with my services, he waved his hand, gave me 200 mil, and whispered in my ear, consider this an investment in you. You've earned it. Seriously? 200 mil? With that much money, we could renovate all of Davistown. <laughs> Just messing with you. I once blew that much money on a little project at Blacksteel, though. Totally not worth it, by the way. Stop dreaming, girl. And get back to work. Just so you know, old-timer, count yourself lucky when you can hear Lara go off on her random tangents. Her mind's always racing while she's working, so she talks nonsense as a way to release the pressure. If she suddenly stops, uh, it means, uh... Mm. It means what? It means the problem's too big and her brain's short-circuiting. Hey everyone, listen closely. Stop whatever you're doing and leave the energy tower back the way you came. Hurry! I mean now! Sylvia, can you finish processing the bank statements before 9 tonight? N no problem. Then I'll leave you to it. Okay. Uh, uh, how long has the manager been talking with those two? In the situation, the account does not look very optimistic. That is not wise course of action. Wait, Liskar, I think I heard something. A blackout. The energy tower? Sorry, something urgent came up. We'll need to confirm the situation first and explain things later. I don't mind. Go right ahead. Oh, looks like the backup power is working. I was hoping we could clock out early because of the blackout. What's the rush? Not like there's anything to do after work. I've just about had it with this damn place. No bars, no nightclubs. Just a tiny diner serving barely edible slop. 
And now even the half dead energy tower isn't working anymore. Hey, Sylvia, why didn't your mother open up more restaurants when she was mayor? Did she lose her sense of taste or what? Sylvia? Huh, did she slink away while the power was out? Uh, what? The plate. What's going on? Laura? Hello? Laura, do you copy? Laura? Woodrow! Something happened back in town. I, I don't know, but things don't look too good, so I'm heading back. Give me a ride. Okay. Where are you, Jessica? Captain Liskarm, I haven't been able to get in touch with Laura. What's going on over there? We were briefly able to make contact with her, but, sh but the signal is awful. All we know is that an emergency occurred during the repairs, but she isn't in any immediate danger for now. But, uh... Don't panic. Just worry about yourself, and we'll meet up at Helena's diner. Understood? Got it! Can you make this thing go any faster? Sorry. Stop, stop crying, I'm asking you to speed up, not trying to bully you. Your captain just told you that Laura's not in any danger. Not for now. There's obviously a major problem with the energy tower, so if she doesn't evacuate in time... Hypothetically, if she really did have an accident, how would you rushing over help at all? I don't know, but I have to. We're partners, so if I'm not there for her, who else would be? Uh, partners, huh? The roads around Davistown ain't in great shape, so you'd best drive carefully. Watch the turn up ahead. Thanks for letting us wait here, ma'am. Don't worry about it, the power's out anyhow, and it don't matter who helps with the emergency generator. You're here, and the diner's that much warmer for it. Just give me a holler if you need anything. Is that one of our squad members outside the window? Where's Laura? And the others? <sighs> Still inside the tower. What exactly happened in there? Laura suddenly told everyone to stop repairs and evacuate the tower ASAP. Once we were out, she asked all the infected members to stay behind and had everyone else, including Miles and Leon, get as far away as possible. Then uh, she took those people back in and said that if she's not out by eight, all the residents on the plate need to be evacuated immediately. Could you confirm the exact situation? She uh, didn't say. Could you try contacting Laura again? That won't work. What about the others? We've still got half the team in there! <laughs> Enough of this. I'm heading over there myself. Sit down, Franca. Captain, you should know this better than me. Even if there was an explosion in there, it wouldn't take out everyone's communicators all at once. The fact that we can't reach any of them probably means that a shit ton of active originium got released, which is jamming the comms. No matter how you slice it, this is an emergency list, Karm. And what would rushing over there accomplish? Don't forget what she said. If we don't hear back from her by 8, we need to prepare to evacuate the entire plate. If we went with your plan and something really did happen, who's going to evacuate the residents? The government officials in a bank's garage? What? Then we're going to let Laura and her team fend for themselves? Why don't we just sit around? Don't let your concern for them cloud your judgement, Franca. <laughs> Hate to bother you, but what time is it now? 5.57pm. Laura! Oh, it's you, Sylvia. 
what happened? You all look so tense. An accident occurred while repairing the power plant, but we still don't know the details. We're waiting for follow-up report. No wonder the power went out. If um, if there's anything I can do to help. <laughs> Sir, where are you going? Heading out for a walk. This place is too damn stuffy. I respect your courage, Sylvia, but what we need right now is patience. Um, my mother, she was the second to last mayor here. She worked here all her life. But she got sick and I had to get a job, so I joined the bank. Uh, I never meant to betray anyone. I don't know what Mr. Thurman told you, but you have to believe me when I say I want to help. You seem to be misunderstanding something. Leon hasn't said a thing about you. Uh, really? Sorry for jumping to conclusions. If you're worried about the energy tower, then you can sit here with us and wait for new for the news. No, uh, I still think... Fine, I'll wait here with you. If no one else has any objections, this is the plan we'll follow to carry out the evacuation, if it comes to it. Thank you for the hard work, everyone. Frank and I will stand guard so the rest of you can take a breather for the, for, for the time being. <sighs> what time is it now, Captain Liscarm? Seven on the dot. Only one hour left. I know. Are we really going to just sit here until eight? This is Jessica reporting in. I've returned to the squad. How's Laura doing? When are we heading out? If you're asking when we're leaving, that'd be 8 o'clock. If you're asking when we're sending back up... I'm not in the mood to argue with a certain Vuvia right now. Ask her yourself. An evacuation? There is less than an hour left. You sure you want to play the waiting game? Excuse me, but who might you be? The, this is Woodrow, a local, um, hunter. You two know each other? I'm the one who took her back to town when she got lost outside. We bumped into each other just now, so she gave me a lift. Well, thank you for helping her out, sir. If something went wrong in the energy tower, why are you all just sitting around out here? We trust in our colleagues' ability to resolve the crisis. They're all professionals at handling originium pollution. Really now? Your deputy sure ain't as calm about the situation. Sir, if an accident really breaks out, then we need to be on standby to evacuate the residents immediately, and we can only do that by staying here. Awful generous of you to share all that with an outsider. But I am one of your colleagues. If you're not going, I'll check it out myself. That will be extremely dangerous. Thanks for the tip. Uh, wait, Woodrow! What's the matter? I'll go with you. Jessica? Not me rash. Have so faint in Laura, even if you went. I know, but even if there's not a whole lot I can do, she's still inside the tower. If she makes it out safely, the least I can do is be there for her with a hug. And if something were to happen, I'd have a chance to rush in there. <laughs> Alright then, let's get going, young lady. Huh? L Laura? Move over, Jessica. I'm starving to death here. Don't go blocking the door to the diner. Re reporting in, Captain Liscarm. I and the rest of the squad have safely returned. Thank heaven you're alright. Laura. 
Uh, in any case, uh, the explosion caused a large amount of originium sediment to build up inside the plant's pipes, which is a critical situation that could have boiled over at a moment's notice. Out of safety concerns, I ordered everyone outside first and tried to come up with a plan, but no matter what cause of a course of action we chose, there was not an insignificant chance of activating the sediment. Nora. Captain, please stop asking. No matter how much you ask, there's not much else I could do to fix things up on such short notice. But I did manage to find a way to preserve the plant's basic heating functionality, so at least people won't be freezing to death. As for whether the plant plate can start moving again, that'll all have to wait until... Uh... Nora, that's enough. Captain... This really was the best I could do. I'm so sorry. No, what I was trying to say is that what matters is that you brought everyone back safely. Oh, really? That's good then. Actually, I'm really hungry right now. Like, really, really, really hungry. Then let's go ahead and eat first. Eat as much as you want and get a good night's rest. Alright, with that done, we are now going to proceed into the full file and voice file for the OG version of Jessica. All I can say is, before we head into it, well, at least I'm not leaving you guys on a cliffhanger until uh, the second part of this narration is done, <laughs> considering that uh, this crisis concluded. Consider yourselves lucky. I was halfway expecting it to be on a cliffhanger. Anyway, let us proceed into the file. And here we are at Jessica's full file, and then we shall also proceed into the voice files, like I said earlier. But before I begin, this is gonna be a very short one. Trust me on this one, if you've never seen OG Jessica's file... Well, it's an OG character for the game and a uh, four star on top of it, so there is not much in here. But it will still be an interesting comparison to, um, to today's standards and considering that the new version is a six star, of course. But anyway, let's begin. Basic info, codename Jessica, gender female, combat experience 2 years, place of birth Victoria, date of birth March 3rd, race feline, height 147 cm, tiny, infection status, non-infected as confirmed by medical report. Physical exam, physical strength, standard, mobility standard, physical resilience, excellent, technical acumen, normal, combat skills standard, originium arts assimilation, normal. Profile. A fully enlisted operator from Blacksteel, stationed at Rhode Island as part of an exchange training program. Clinical analysis. Imaging tests on this operator show clear outlines of internal organs with no abnormal dark spots or shadows, no unusual traces of originium particles present in the circulatory system, no signs of infection, confirming this operator as uninfected. So, cell originium assimilation 0%, operator Jessica showed no symptoms of aripathy. Blood originium crystal density 0.12 units per liter. Operator Jessica rarely comes into contact with originium. Archive file number one. A panicky operator dispatched from Blacksteel. Jessica is a reliable, combat effective asset and full time Blacksteel mercenary. But she suffers from such crippling insecurity that Vanilla, a Blacksteel apprentice, seems more dependable in battle. Archive file number two. Perhaps thanks to her. Timidity, Black Steel executives would often scoop Jessica up and subject her to test of uh, to the test of new equipment and devices. Even after arriving at Rhode Island, operators would ask Jessica to demonstrate their new equipment before they'd be willing to use it. In a way, it shows how naturally trustworthy Jessica is. Archive file number three. A part of Jessica's insecurity stems from selective perception. In actuality, Jessica has the skills to hold at least the middle rank in an organization of any scale. In her time with Blacksteel, as well as Rhode Island, there has never been a blemish on her record. And that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing before we head off into the uh, voice files, as a quick reminder, there is an operator record re related to this character. Uh, I have it uploaded on the channel and it will be linked in the uh, description of this video at the very top if you want to watch it and see it. It's a nice little piece about pretty much character growth, you could say, uh, and her growth as a person. Uh, I will, however, keep a lookout if this will be any 
if there will be any feasible point in the story where I can use this little operator record in uh, in like storytelling, like a little intermission uh, of sorts. But we'll see. For now, I have no idea because, well, you have just watched the very same part that I only know so far. But uh, yeah, we'll 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 see. We'll see uh, how this progresses. Anyway, I will now shut up. You get to listen, and then I will meet you all back again at the short little outro after this. So let's begin. Is there anything I can help with? Just say the word, and I can do it. Franca and Leskarm are so incredible. I really admire them. I want to become as great as they are someday. I can... I can do it. Will you help me, Doctor? Um, I heard word that Vanilla's here too. She was in my squad when she first joined Blacksteel. We went on missions together. She's become such a reliable operator now. But I'm still just me. Doctor? Do I come off as... spineless? I know I shouldn't let people walk all over me. I'm trying to change. Sometimes, I feel like I'm back in Blacksteel. Even after going through so much with Rhodes Island. I'm not the old me anymore, either. It's weird. Is it because I miss how it was back then? Uh, no. No. I don't miss the person I used to be. I know that for sure. Hard work doesn't mean anything without results. That's what I think, at least. That's why I don't want anyone to see me training alone. Having you, though... It's really comforting when you're with me, for some reason. I pulled a muscle training a couple days ago. But don't worry. Uh, I'm okay. <sighs> I won't let this get in the way of you or anyone at Rhodes Island, Doctor. Freeze! Hands in the air! Oh, did I scare you? I'm sorry. It's just Franca told me to be bold and assertive. And I only wanted to try it out. I'm really sorry. Everyone at Black Steel and Rhodes Island is so amazing and talented. I know I'm nothing compared to them. But still, just every once in a while, I really like it when I get compliments. Doctor? Doctor? Are you sleeping? I'll clean your desk up for you then. Um, are you... Doctor? Nice to meet you. I'm Jessica from Blacksteel Worldwide. Sorry, I'm really bad at introducing myself. This seems a lot more effective than training by myself. Doctor? I'm... I'm so happy you're honoring me. Just... Let me cry it out for a bit. I'll be fine. Uh, doctor? Does this mean you think I'm a great operator? Thank you so much for all your help. You are by my side all the way. Just give your orders and I'll carry them out. I won't let you down. Stay focused. Look straight ahead. I'll definitely prove myself this time. Standing by. <sighs> <sighs> Alright. You'll... You'll pay for that. Freeze! Not one step backward. I'll show them what I can do. I'm going to climb to the top of the mountain. I won't stop halfway. I... I really did it? I managed to protect everyone by myself? I could do better. I can't get complacent just because we won. Requesting medevac! I dragged everyone down. It's all my fault. Sorry. I'm sorry! I wonder if the people at Rhodes Island are nice. Where are we going? I can do a little cooking. Arknights. Good morning, Doctor. Alright, and that would be it for part one. 
Well, so far the story is proceeding pretty briskly, it doesn't seem to be too dense, but we'll see how the later parts of this turn out, usually towards the end some denser storytelling uh, tends to happen, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how this one proceeds. So far, I like the pace, I like the characters, uh, let's, let's see where it leads us, and, uh, you could also say for that one specific character, bitch detected. I gave her a specific vocal behavior for a reason. Well, for a reason that I'm expecting her, uh, to turn that way, but let's see. <laughs> anyway. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please consider leaving a like on it, it would help me out a lot. Uh, if you're new to the channel and enjoy this, consider subscribing. There is a shit ton on the channel when it comes to playlists for pretty much anything Arknights from side to main story. And uh, we're gonna keep this going, so hang around. And uh, if you wanna support me and my work more directly, there are memberships as well, starting already from just something like one buck a month. And, like I always say, there will be no videos behind a membership paywall, it is literally just to support me more directly and my work at the channel and so on and so forth. So, to the members already there, thank you very much, much appreciated guys, and, uh, yeah, thank you all. Hope you have a lot of luck uh, if you're watching this while Jessica's banner is live. Hope you're having a lot of luck pulling for her and uh, not spending, <laughs> hopefully you're not spending everything, uh, because juicy banners be incoming and uh yeah thank you hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are and i will see you in the next part until then bye bye